Is the fit of creatures to their environment evidence to evolution, or is it something else? Let's explain the difference between evolution and adaptation. Good day, everyone. In many conversations where I would go asking people to present their evidence for evolution, they would immediately give me evidence that are really not evolution, but rather adaptation. They will give me examples like this environment where the frog is dark green and that other environment where the frog is light green. That bird has a long beak and that bird in a different environment has a shorter beak and so forth. Now, number one, adaptation is not evolution. It is called evolution of species by natural selection. It is not adaptation of the same species according to its environment. And the reason adaptation is pretty acceptable is that adaptation is just the expression of existing genes according to the environment. You see, creatures have genetic material that would actually manifest itself into different variations of the same feature. A feature that is physically manifested is called a phenotype. A feature that is innate in the program of the creature is a genotype. And not every genotype is expressed. So this one creature can have the ability through its genes to have a light color or a dark color. But then there's this mechanism called epigenetics. And epigenetics have been recently discovered. They control the expression of genes. So all of a sudden, a gene that has not been expressed is getting expressed due to the exposure to a certain substance, to a certain environmental condition, or for example, change in age. This is a great field of study where, for example, scientists are looking for solutions to cancer because many diseases are caused when some genes are expressed. If a gene that causes a disease is not expressed, the disease will just not happen. Lamarck looked into this phenomenon of, for example, some animals growing longer necks like giraffes, for example. Mendel looked into inheritance. Now, all of those scientists, including Darwin, had no idea about our current understanding of genetics and DNA. So I'm wondering, how come modern scientists who understand biology and microbiology, who understand the very obvious difference between the expression of a phenotype that is coming from an already existing genotype due to an epigenetic expression of that already existing genotype and evolution, which is completely different. We're looking at evolution claiming that because an animal who walks on land would develop wings that has feathers and fly by random mutations and natural selection. It means that random mutation will write completely new genetic code. You're talking about a creature that has gills gills that take oxygen, extract oxygen out of water, will suddenly have, <clears throat> through gradual mutation and natural selection, will have lungs that have a completely different mechanism to extract oxygen from air. We're looking at radical changes between, for example, what is a crustacean, and what is a vertebrate. 
an animal that has an exoskeleton, an animal that has an endoskeleton. Completely different ways of locomotion, completely different styles of life. Nothing like each other. This is evolution. And please, do feel free to find and present evidence that nature can write genetic code out of no genetic code. Not only change existing genetic code so that a gill becomes a lung or a lung becomes a gill, but even writing completely new programs because the human being has 46 chromosomes and its predecessors, the very simple cells, do not have the same number of genes. You have cells or organisms having seven or eight. So nature is claiming, sorry, evolution is claiming that random mutation and natural selection write complete programs from scratch. I'm leaving you with this thought as a landmark so that you make the distinction between what is adaptation and what is evolution. I also leave you to research yourself. What does it mean to express a gene? What is epigenetics? And how does epigenetics affect species? And how do they flow from ancestors to descendants according to the latest studies? Thank you for joining this trip to find and understand the truth. It doesn't matter that the truth is advocated by the few, because truth will stand on the virtue of being the truth, no matter what. Talk to you again soon.